This is the course two lesson on greatest common factor, which is found on chapter five, lesson two in your textbook. That's on page 203. Remember, everyone should be looking in page 203. You should be looking in that lesson in their textbook to look for vocabulary, to look for notes that they can copy down, examples that they can copy down to help them out. I'm gonna talk about a lot of things, but I'm not gonna be writing a lot of notes on the board in this video. I'm just gonna be going over so, for, through some key um, information that you need to know to helping you understand this stuff, okay? So we're talking about greatest common factor, GCF, greatest common factor, which is when you look at a group of numbers and you look at their factors and you see which is the biggest number that they all have in common. Well, what's one mistake students usually make when they do greatest common factor? They confuse it with least common multiple. Don't confuse greatest common factor, GCF, with least common multiple, LCM. What are the factors of a number? Well, the factors of a number are those numbers that you can divide a number by without getting a remainder. Or the other way to look at it is those numbers that go multiplied together to create that number. Okay? For example, the factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Okay? These are the numbers that I can divide 12 by without getting a remainder. Or from the multiplication end, 1 times 12 is 12, 2 times 6 is 12, 3 times 4 is 12. Those are the numbers I can multiply together to make 12. That's what factors are. The multiples of a number are the multiplication facts for that number. What you get when you multiply that number by something. So if I'm talking about the multiples of 12, I'm talking about 12 times 1 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, 12 times 3 is 36, 12 times 4 is 48, 12 times 5 is 60, 12 times 6 is 72, and so on. Those are the multiples, okay? Right now, we're not talking about multiples, we will soon, but we're talking about greatest common factor, okay? So, once again, when you're thinking about greatest common factor, you're looking at a list of numbers, a group of numbers, and you're trying to find out, of those numbers, what factors do they have in common, and which of those factors is the greatest, which is the biggest, okay? which is the biggest number that I could divide all those numbers by. So one method is to list the factors for all the numbers you're dealing with, as I have done here. We're going to try to find the greatest common factor for 12, 18, and 30. So what I did was I listed the factors. The factors for 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. The factors for 18 are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. And the factors for 30 are 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, and 30. Okay? Now, what do we do now? Well, we're going to look at the three lists, and we're going to see are there any factors that are the same for all three numbers. First thing you're always going to find is every single number always has at least one common factor, and that's 1. Okay? Every number can be divided by 1 without getting a remainder. So we're not even going to touch 1. That's a given, right? Well, what's next? Let's take a look. Two. Do all of these have a two? Yes, they do. All right? So I'm going to circle them. How about three? Do all of these have a three? Yes, they do. So I'm going to circle those as well. Okay? How about four? Nope. How about five? Nope. How about six? Yes, they all have a six in common. Okay? Any other numbers that they have in common? Nine, 12, 10, 18, 15? No. So, what are the three important? Because I'm not counting one. What are the three common factors that 12, 18, and 30 have? Well, they have two, they have three, and they have six. And what are we looking for? The greatest common factor or the least common factor? We're looking for the greatest common factor. What's the biggest of these three numbers? Six. So the greatest common factor, the GCF of 12, 18, and 30 is six. Okay? Next, we're going to talk about a different way to find greatest common factor using prime factorization. We just talked about how to find greatest common factor of a set of numbers by making a list of the factors and then looking at the common factors and circling the one that's the biggest. But is there another way to do it? The answer is yes. What if you're working with really big numbers that you don't know all the factors for? Or if you're working with a big set of numbers, okay, and you're trying to find a quicker way to do it? Well, the answer is, there is a quicker way to do it, and that's by using prime factorization, okay? So we're going to go ahead and find the greatest common factor for these three numbers here. 12, 24, and 60. Let's go ahead and do 12, okay? 12, 24, 
okay? Prime factorization of 12, very simple. What two numbers multiply together to make 12? Three and four, okay? Three is a prime number, that's taken care of. Four, we gotta break it down to two and two. Right? So now 12 comes from two times two times three. And we can write that out. When I first, in the first video on prime factorization, I said to shorten it, to use exponents. But for what we're gonna do here with greatest common factor, don't shorten it. Just write it out the way it is, okay? Now let's do 24. All right, 24 comes from, let's say two times 12, okay? Two is a prime number that's taken care of. What does 12 come from? Well, you wanna say, let's say two times six. Two is a prime number that's taken care of. What does six come from? Two times three. And those are both prime numbers. So once again, without shortening it with exponents, what is a prime factorization for 24? Two times two times two times three. We're gonna write that just like that right here. Okay, now let's do 60. It comes from six times 10. Neither one of those is prime, so we gotta keep going. Six comes from two times three. Both of those are prime. And 10 comes from two times five. Both of those are prime, okay? And we're finished with that one. So once again, we're gonna go ahead and write the prime factors out without exponents. 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. So that becomes 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Good? Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to line up the prime factors for all three numbers and we're going to look to see what they have in common. So we're gonna, I'm going to move the prime factors for 12 and 24 right over here, right under the prime factors for 60. So the prime factors for 24 are 2 times two, times two, times three, okay? And the prime factors for 12 were two times two times three. Now let's take a look at what they have in common. Do they have a two in common? Yes, 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 okay? They have a two in common, so we're gonna circle that. How about another set of twos? Yes, two, two, and two. They have another set of twos in common. How about a third set of twos? Do they have a third set of twos in common? No. Uh, the prime number, the prime factor for 24 does, it has three twos, but the other ones don't. So this two doesn't have any partners in the others, we can get rid of them. How about three? Do they all have a three in common? Three, 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 yes they do. So we can circle those, okay? And a five, do any of them have a five in common? No, they don't. The only one that has five is 60. So now what prime numbers and how many of them do they have in common? Well, we have two times two times three. You see, two times two times three, two times two times three, two times two times three. They all have two times two times three. And what is two times two times three? Well, it is 12. And that is the greatest common factor for 12, 24, and 60. It's 12. This time I'm going to use the numbers 30, 45, and 75. Okay? So let's go ahead and do 30. All right, let's do the prime factorization of 30. 30, we could say, comes from 3 times 10. Okay? 3 is prime. That's taken care of. 10 comes from 2 times 5. Those two are taken care of, okay? So 30 comes from two times three times five. Good? All right, let's do 45 now. Let's do 45 now. 45 comes from, well, we could say five times nine, correct? Well, five is prime. Is nine prime? A lot of students tend to think, they get confused, they think nine is prime because it's odd. But remember, nine is not prime because nine it doesn't just have one times nine, it also has three times three. So nine is not prime, but nine comes from what prime number? Three. So nine comes from three times three, and those are prime, so we circle those. 
45 comes from 3 times 3 times 5. Okay? Now let's take a look at 75. 75 comes from, once again, remember, 3 quarters, 3 times 25. 75 comes from 3 times 25, 3 is pi, 25 comes from 5 times 5. And 5 is prime. So 75 comes from 3 times 5 times 5. Now let's go ahead and line up the others. Let's do it right here, under here. Okay? So we're going to bring this over. 3 times 5 times 5. And we're going to bring this over here. 2 times 3 times 5. Okay. Let's take a look. Do they have any 3's in common? Yes, they do. We have one set of threes in common right here. Okay? How about any twos? No twos in common. How about any other threes in common? No, no threes in common. How about fives in common? Yep, five, five, five. So they have these fives in common, and this five here is an extra, he doesn't count. So what to what prime numbers do all three of these numbers have in common? They each have three times five. Three times five, three times five, three times five. So the prime, the greatest common factor of 30, 45, and 75 is 3 times 5, which is, sorry, which is 15. Now we're going to do greatest common factor of algebraic expressions. This is the same thing we've been doing all along, except now they've stuck some variables in there, correct? And we've already done this because we're going to use prime factorization and we've already done prime factorization of algebraic expressions. So this is not going to be a problem. First off, let's go ahead and find the greatest common factor of 10a and 15a squared. Please remember that 15a squared means 15 times a times a. We don't know what a is. 10a means 10 times a. So what are we going to do? First thing we're going to do is the prime factorization of the number part. So what's the prime factorization of 10? Well. 10 is easy, that's 2 times 5, right? And then we bring down the 8. So the prime factorization of 10 is 2 times 5 times a. Good? Now, let's do 15a squared. Well, what does 15 come from? 15 comes from 3 times 5, right? That's it, we're done. Those are both prime. So it comes from 3 times 5 times what? times a times a again. Why? Because this says a squared, which means a times a. Right? Now let's line up one under the other. I'm just going to move this one down here. We have 2 times 5 times a, and let's see what they have in common. Do they have any 2's in common? No. How about any 3's? No. How about 5's? Yes, they do. They have fives in common right here. Okay? How about A's? Yes, they do. They have A's in common right here. How about this A? This A's an extra. Get that A out of here. So what do both of these numbers have in common? 5A. 5A. So what is the greatest common factor of 10A and 15A squared? It is... 5a. Okay? Because after we did the prime factorization for each and we found what they had in common, they each had a 5 in common and they each had an a in common. So the greatest common factor, we put it together, of 15a, I mean of 10a and 15a squared is 5a. Alright? Let's try another one. Let's take a look at these two. 14xy and 7x squared. Once again, remember 14xy means 14 times x times y. 7x squared means 7 times x times x again, right? So let's do the prime factorization for the number 14. 14 comes from? Easy, 2 times 7. Those are both primes, so that's taken care of, right? So then it's 2 times 7 times what? Times x times y. That that one was very easy, very, very easy, okay? Now let's do 7x squared. Remember, 
x squared means x times x, correct? So what does 7 come from? Well, 7 is already prime. It comes from 1 times 7. So 7 comes from 7 times what? Times x times x again because it's x squared. And when we line these up, okay, let's see what they have in common. Do they have 2's in common? No. Do they have 7's in common? Yes, right here. Do they have X's in common? Yes. How about the second X? No, there's only one here. There isn't another X here. And how about the Y? No, they don't have the Y in common. So what do they have in common? A 7 and an X. So what's the greatest common factor of 14XY and 7X squared? It is 7X. And that is greatest common factor of algebraic expressions.